Vox Box Podcast, Episode 5. Remember, nothing you do today is going to be more difficult than shooting womp rats. What is thy bidding, Minus? There is great disturbance in the force. The Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Your source for Star Wars comics, news, and more. And now your host, Michael Corley. Welcome to the fifth episode of Vox Box Star Wars Comic Book Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Today we are covering the fifth Star Wars original comic from 1977. And it is titled, Lo, the Moons of Yavin. We open with the Millennium Falcon in pursuit. They have just escaped the Death Star. They have just lost Obi-Wan Kenobi. And again, I want to make a quick note that even from here, from the last one, the characters in this are beginning to look more and more like what we think of Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia. I'll share some of the images here, and you can really see that these are becoming the iconic characters that we know, masterfully illustrated by Howard Chaikin. We see the thoughts of the four main characters. These thoughts are basically used to recap what has already come. But the interesting thing is when they get to Chewbacca, it says, And Chewbacca? The seven-foot fur-covered Wookiee? His thoughts are as much his own as the strange language he speaks. Now, one thing that is definitely different, when we cut to the TIE fighter pilots, their helmets look very different than in the movie. They're sort of cone-shaped at the top. They look even more disturbing, to be perfectly honest. Less like a skull and more like a mechanical squid. We see Luke as he's becoming more and more confident and beginning to try and use the Force that his reflexes become better, and he's able to hit his targets more accurately. An interesting introspective from the narrator, as there's a close-up of Han Solo, and it says, Han Solo finds out that space mercenaries, too, can pray. At this point, they've lost their main deflector. They realize a direct hit will mean their doom. And that's when Han Solo and Luke Skywalker make their shots and turn the TIE Fighters into dust. That's when Leia tells them that the R2 unit does indeed have the plans for the Death Star, and they are hoping that a weakness can be found that will help the rebels take out the Death Star. We cut to Darth Vader and Tarkin, and they're talking about the chance that they've taken by putting a homing beacon on the ship, and that it will lead them to the rebel base. Darth Vader is saying, have no fear. This day will be long remembered. It is seen the end of the last of the Jedi Knights, and very soon the end of the rebellion itself. When we cut back to Han Solo, he's telling the princess that he's only in this for the money, and that he has no other reason for helping the rebellion. The princess is looking at Han somewhat wistfully, and Luke is thinking to himself, I do, princess. I care. Han and Luke are having words back and forth about affections toward the princess, and the narrator even says, Solo smiles at the younger man's jealousy, and he's uncertain in his own mind whether he added the comment merely to bait his naive friend, or because it's the truth. As they're talking about how difficult it will be to hit the reactor that could destroy the Death Star, Luke responds, I used to bullseye womp rats back on my T-16 back home. They're not much bigger than two meters. Now, I have to share something with you. Way back in the 1990s, there was a showing of the three original films at the Paramount Theater in Austin, Texas. And me and my friends went to watch it. At the Paramount Theater at the time, you could buy alcohol. And some of the viewers were very, very drunk. By the time you got to the end of the first movie, when Luke said, I used to bullseye womp rats back on my T-16, a incredibly drunk woman screamed out at the screen, All right, Luke! Now we see the preparation for the assault on the Death Star. We see Han loading his cargo, his payment for saving the princess. Leia gives Luke yet another kiss. <laughs> oh boy. And that's when we see Biggs once again. Biggs is talking to the blue leader and the blue leader recognizes Luke Skywalker's name. In fact, that means that it's time for... 
dramatic reenactment. Well, I gotta get aboard, Luke. Listen, you'll tell me all your stories when we come back, right? It's gonna be like old times, little buddy. We're a couple of shooting stars that'll never be stopped. May the force be with you. And the part of Biggs was read by Mark Hurlman. He's the co-founder and co-host of the Star Wars Report and the host of Star Wars Beyond the Films. He's the expert you want to go to for info on the expanded universe side of Star Wars. You can find his podcast with his co-hosts at StarWarsReport.com. Thanks, Mark. They call out target approaching. Now it's do or die. And that ends Star Wars number five. Fun to see the differences between the movie and the comic. If you'd like to see key panels from this, go to voxboxpodcast.com slash episode five. You have a wonderful day, and may the force be with you. No! You failed your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. Thank you for listening to the Vox Box Star Wars podcast. Join the Vox Box Facebook page to keep up with the community. Have a great day and may the force be with you.